ka arahi ke te tokanuku. Kaore e tōpana. I think it's important for Tauiwi or non-Māori to embrace Indigenous rights, especially for migrants. If we want to call this our home, we have to acknowledge the history of the place. We have to acknowledge that there's been a lot of violence, a lot of dispossession of Māori that's resulted in a completely unequal society. So we have to create justice and give sovereignty back to Māori. I just want to see the world a better place and I think storytelling is just one vehicle to achieve that. Well, I was born in Xi'an in China, which is home to the Terracotta Warriors. What I know from Wikipedia. My parents came over to New Zealand, to Auckland, when I was two. I grew up in East Auckland. It's known for like having a huge migrant population. It's a huge Asian population there now. Growing up in New Zealand, I spent a really long time not wanting to be Chinese because I guess they were always portrayed in the media as something that it was clear to me, even at a young age, that that wasn't what I wanted to be. I would cringe like when people would say the word China or Chinese. That's how far that hatred towards my own identity was. I stopped speaking Chinese because I wanted to be Kiwi, which in my head was Pākehā, and that's kind of had a long-term effect in that I still can't really communicate with my mum in Mandarin. Today we're at the Ōtara Market. These are my grandparents from my dad's side. My dad passed away about three years ago and now I've been living with my grandparents. They're a little bit less mobile now that they're into their 80s. Chinese grandparents love to feed their grandkids. The first question that any grandparent often asks is, have you eaten yet? And even if you have, they'll make you eat more. So I guess food is a really key part of that culture. I think I've always had an interest in learning te reo Māori. In first year uni, I took a Māori paper and I loved it so much and I just wanted to keep taking it, so I did a diploma of language in te reo Māori and it's been life-changing. <laughs> Concepts like land and property, like in a Māori worldview, you realise how different the media portrayal of Māori is compared to what te reo Māori really is. So I think that started to make me think about why we had these disparities. I tēnei wā e mahi ana o i te ao whakaari, i te ao kiriata, me te ao whakāhua hoki. Today I'm working with my friend Ricardo. He is uh, running to become a candidate for the Green Party and he wants a campaign video made, so we're at this Green Party event. Hopefully he can use that material to form his campaign video. I'm a freelancer, so my work is different every day and I love that. I might not know what I'm doing at the start of the week, but by the end of the week, it'll be really full. Most of my work has to do with film or photography. I'm just editing some photos of this wedding I took photos at the other day. Um, it was kind of a three-part wedding, so there was a henna night, a nika ceremony, which is a Muslim wedding ceremony, and then a reception event. School, I always really loved maths. I liked how logical it was. I liked how you could always get the right answer. And then I kind of think creativity is way harder than that because there's no one right answer. It's always so subjective. I feel like with art and storytelling, you can make more of a difference in people's lives. You can really impact people's perceptions about the world, about other people and communities. I tend to work with communities from marginalised backgrounds and identities that have been traditionally underrepresented in the media.
In 2015, there was this hui up at Waitangi and it was for young activists to learn about how Te Tiriti o Waitangi could be a central part of different activism movements, whether it was environmental, queer movements, sustainability and all sorts of different social and environmental movements. And there was a hikoi up on Waitangi Day and we were with a bunch of other people attending the hui, mostly Pākehā, and they were holding up the sign that said Pākehā against Raupatu and then we were like tentatively holding it, not sure if that applied to us. And then through the crowd, this person runs past us and is like, I don't want to assume, but would you like to hold this banner up with me? And the banner said, Asians going to Ranga Tiratanga. And we were like, yes, thank you, that is us. As a group, Asians going to Ranga Tiratanga, we've been doing treaty workshops and a lot of activism or communication online on social media, trying to educate our different Asian communities about te tiriti and what responsibilities Toei we have to Māori. We're at the Sandringham Community Centre and this is Asian School of Tiranga Tiratanga and we are having a banner making day. just invited lots of different people. Some are existing members who we've worked with for a long time and some are new people, because um, we're always looking to grow the group. One project that I've worked on recently was this podcast and video series called Conversations with My Immigrant Parents with my friend Sarayd. We travelled around Aotearoa and talked to different immigrant whānau and learnt about what their journey has been being here in Aotearoa. The stories weren't always about racism and discrimination, which I guess can be the stereotype when it comes to immigrant stories. They were also about themes that affect all families, so relationships, love, family expectations, language, divorce, mental health, sexuality, things that just affect all of us, but kind of with an immigrant lens that I don't think we get to hear as much. Identity is always an ongoing journey. It's not a destination that you'll ever kind of reach and be comfortable with, because I think we're always changing, and that's a good thing. Matangataka Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.